welcome to the last broadcast of the mid-2015 NAVSCAR Pro Series. Tonight we'll be racing at the uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. 133 laps around uh, this fast track. Um, excited to crown a championship champion here. We've got a pretty close race. Top five uh, in championship points are all pretty tight together. So uh, looking forward to some tight racing tonight. Um, guys are on the track qualifying. Uh, we should see some some times here shortly. I'm in the booth tonight with uh, my my co-host Jamie Christensen as well as Dustin Phillips. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing good. You excited about the race? I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to be here. Uh, looking forward to seeing who's going to get this first championship. Um, really close battle, so looking forward to it. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think we're going to see some uh, interesting racing. It is so close, uh, the top of the charts, that really it's anybody's race. Let's take a look at that top 25 real quick here. Uh, right now we got leading uh, leading the points. Nate Lafleur, he's got a uh, 1,119 points. Second place, John Fershing Jr., good old dad right there, uh, 1,115 points. So four points uh, split first and second. Uh, this father and son duo looks like they're going to be battling it out on the track to kind of see who decides for it, uh, decides to get that championship. David Howard Jr., James Skeleton, I think uh, Skeleton's nine points back. Sorry, six points. Six points back. So really, it's anyone's game tonight, that top four, top five. Yeah, I, you know, I'm torn here because, you know, Josh Buckley came into the uh, championship in, in first place. Had some incidents there. Uh, he's dropped down to fifth, but, you know, I still think he's going to be one to contend with here tonight. For sure, yeah, you're right, Jamie. Um, I'm I'm really feeling good about uh, Buckley tonight. Just uh, he's looking back ten points back, but um, he can make the swing and have a good race. He was fast in practice, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, with the opportunities to pick up bonus points tonight, um, there's a lot of a lot of opportunity for post race bonus points. You get a point for leading a lap, point for a win, point for finishing a race, point for no incidents. So. There's definitely opportunity here to uh, collect some bonus points. I think we're going to see guys thinking about that when we come into pits and who's going to be staying out uh, to try and get those points. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, tonight I'm, I'm excited to be at Charlotte. Charlotte's a great track. It's a fast track. we got some cooler – we have uh, some cooler temperature going on out there, and I think that just adds to the racing. Uh, the track is actually, from my perspective, really forgiving. I drove a couple laps here uh, right before practice started, test out the track. It was really forgiving. In fact, you know, you can feel it slide a little bit around, but uh, you just come out of the gas just a, a, a slight bit, and it, it, it picks right back up, and, and you're uh, through the corner. So I'm excited to see the racing. Yeah, the one thing about Charlotte um, that always gets me as a driver is those bumps exiting four and entering one. Those, uh, Kind of like the track just kind of drops out from underneath you when you're you're exiting four, and that can really upset the car. But once you get used to it and know when, you know, if you have to lift the throttle, where to lift it to keep the car in line, um, once you get that under your belt, you're going to do well. Yeah, I think it gets interesting, and Dustin probably can speak to this, being a former driver himself, you know. Um, the, the X factor here is... When you're driving by yourself, you, you've got those things going on. But when you put other cars around you, and you do get a draft here, you get extra speed, and uh, you start getting in some momentum there, those other cars, one, uh, make you have to readjust your line a little bit, and then you've got to be cognizant of the cars around you. What, what are your thoughts on that, Dustin? Uh, Jamie, I think you hit right on it, man. Um, definitely these cars, uh, there's a lot of speed. We're talking in practice. Um, from guys um, and how well these cars uh, were sucking up to each other. But the big thing here is um, the aero push. Uh, I think these guys, they felt a little bit of it in practice, but when they get that uh, green flag, we've seen some fast times here tonight, but we definitely won't see the type of speeds uh, in the pack like that. So um, it's going to be a nice close battle, and it's just going to be able to whoever uh, can manage their stuff and keep their nose clean. I think you, you mentioned uh, aero push, and I think that brings up a good point. Clean air here uh, is definitely key. I think when you get into a group of people, dirty air just can really, really push the car off the track if you're not ready for it. Um, these guys that spent a lot of time you know, during practice just running around by themselves and getting quick times and maybe not getting as much practice tucked up behind another car or um, inside or outside of another car, they could be, uh, they could be learning a lot that first lap. Yeah, this practice session is interesting too. You know, we got a lot, a lot of cars out there, 
Uh, I don't see anybody really teaming up, though, you know, uh, trying to utilize that draft. These guys are out there trying to put down their fastest laps by themselves. And, of course, as I say that, I look at, uh, you know, Mike Abbott and, and uh, Brent Cowboy Rogers. They're uh, trying to push themselves to the front. I think they want to be up front with the uh, track position tonight. So, Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, right. We talk no, go ahead. Uh, we talked about, um, you know, uh, a few of the guys teaming up, uh, I think a lot of times uh, that, that error of push is, is a big thing. So I saw a lot of a lot of the quick times you'd think would be with help of the draft, but a lot of solo runs I was watching in practice, and that was what was getting your fast time. So. Yeah, I don't think you're quick, uh, especially as a following car through the corner. I think it's really, really more of a challenge uh, when you're when you're right on the car in front of you to keep the car low. So I think you're right. Maybe if you can work something out where if you can get close enough and, you, you know, if you have a, a quote-unquote teammate, um, get them to push you down the back stretch maybe, and then um, as the lead car, you might be able to pick up a quick lap, but um, that second car is, is definitely going to be uh, going to be a challenge. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to see what we've seen in, in other races where we've had warmer temperatures either. I know turn four has been kind of a, you know, uh, a... <laughs> A bad area to, to exit because it gets slippery coming out of there but uh, with the cooler temperatures I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna see that uh, minimized now we do have a, a rather long race 133 laps that's uh that can be you know an hour's worth of driving just over an hour's worth of driving here at this track no caution so these guys are going to have to get on the track and um, keep the car underneath them. I know a lot of guys have been spinning out, just especially through this this uh, qualifying session, guys coming off the corner. Um, but, you know, they're pushing it. They're trying to get fast laps. That's what qualifying is about. Um, so during the race conditions, things are going to be a little bit different. Guys will get in line and try and manage their stuff. But talking about qualifying, uh, we're going to be making a change next season for our viewers. We're going to be actually making a little bit change to the format. Right now we run an open format. Um, where everybody can go out, run as many laps as they want, reset their car. They basically got 10 minutes, um, just get a fast lap. And we're going to be adjusting that next season. Uh, we're still going to run at most of the tracks in open format like this one, but we're not going to allow drivers to reset their cars. So basically uh, you start your, your, your session, you exit the box, uh, exit your, your uh, pit box, go out on the track. Next time you are in your pit box, your race, your qualifying session is over. So uh, guys will be allowed to come down pit road and stop, you know, first half of pit road if they want to wait it out and see if they need to go back out on the track to improve their time. But as soon as they put a wheel in their pit box, um, their qualifying session is over. And that, what that's going to do is that's going to um, it's going to keep the guys that are really good at running really hard and maybe bouncing off the wall a couple times until they they put together a clean lap it's going to make them think about um, hurting their cars and that brings us closer to an, a nascar or a nascar style qualifying session where obviously if you if you run up into the wall during a real qualifying session in a car uh, your race is done as well With that, well, lead, leading the board right now, we got uh, Nate Lafleur. He's he's on the on the pole with a fast lap of 28.496. Second place, Calvin Allison, 28.565. Uh, third place, we have James Skeleton with a 28.539. Fourth place, John Fershing Jr. with a 28.578. And rounding out the top five, Joshua Buckley with a 28.582. Yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing him get uh, two by two here. But, you know, you, you talked about the line a little bit, and I, I think we, we should really kind of talk about that a little bit more because, you know, it, it, we are running a fixed setup. Everybody's got th the same car from a setup standpoint. Uh, but it is the line in which you get around this place, whether you uh, get in hard and exit slow or if you uh, back that corner up and, and uh, get a good run off. Uh, I think that's going to be the, the, what differentiates these drivers tonight. Yeah, for sure. And we'll probably see guys play with that entry um, throughout the night. Uh, fast guys will probably back it up when they need to, and, and some guys are going to run it really hard, maybe on new tires. So, um, yeah, playing with the line, playing your entry, figuring out where you can keep the car down is, is really what's going to make you quick. 
Yeah, and I haven't seen uh, too many guys talk about tire wear and that that's a factor tonight. I, I'm only imagining with the cooler temperatures, we're not going to see a whole lot of tire wear. We will if we get a, you know, a longer run. Uh, when it comes to that fuel window, I don't know, Mike, have you or Dustin, did you guys hear as to whether or not uh, what they're looking at from a, from a fuel perspective? I did not. Dustin, did you hear a fuel window? Uh, actually, guys, I did not hear a fuel window. Not many guys were talking about fuel. I saw a lot trying to get um, ready for qualifying. So I'm sure a couple of guys ran some, and they're kind of maybe keeping it to themselves, but they definitely didn't uh, like that public tonight. Maybe maybe fuel mileage race. We'll see. Yeah, I, I know we've had a couple of fuel mileage races here, and um, you're right. I think guys were kind of concentrating on getting their laps down. Uh, as well, I, I, I didn't see anybody really concentrate or practice getting on pit road, so that could be... Um, that could be a big deal later on, too. Well, the pit car, or I'm sorry, the pace car speed uh, tonight is 65 miles an hour. Uh, pit speed is 50. So, you know, these guys are going to be cruising around this track and slowing it down to get into uh, pit roads is going to be interesting, but we'll check that out when that actually occurs. So let's, uh, let's get them gridded up. Looks like we're just waiting for a couple more drivers. We're about 40 seconds away from uh, pulling off. We'll run through the grid as soon as they start moving. So do you guys want to go into, while well, we've got a quick second, pick a driver here? Sure, I'll go ahead. All right, do it. Um, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, you know, you're looking at Nate. He's been fast all night. He's always going to be up front. But I, I think I'm going to go tonight with uh, old John Fershing Jr. I think he's going to teach the son a lesson tonight and uh they're battling close in points so i'm uh looking forward to seeing how john does sure i'll go uh that's a good pick there dustin i <laughs> he's always fast always consistent always a strong driver uh he's got a lot on the line tonight he's probably gonna be running a good race uh me myself i'm gonna go with uh the 914 i'm gonna go with tim lewis i've been watching this guy over the last couple of weeks uh, we've talked about him over the last couple of weeks about making huge improvements. Uh, he's fast, and uh, I think he's going to be one to contend with. He's he's always the guy that's always taking care of his equipment, so I'm going with Tim Lewis tonight. I think uh, my pick, you know, I picked him last week, and uh, he let me down, so I'm going to give him an opportunity to kind of uh, redeem himself. I'm going to pick James Skelton. I think he's starting third tonight, and he's always been quick and consistent, so um, I have a good feeling about him tonight. Let's run through the starting grid. On the first row, uh, we've got Nate LaFleur starting on the inside, and on the outside, we've got Calvin Allison. I don't have the grid up. So. All right, row number two, we've got James Skelton, and on the outside, we've got John Fershing Jr. Row number three, Joshua Buckley and Timothy Lewis. Row number four, we've got the four car of Ricky Goodman, on the outside, the eight car of Brett Rogers. Row number five, we've got the 555 of Butch Fraser on the outside. Back on the, the track again, Mike Abbott. It's good to see him in a couple races in a row here. Row number six, we got Kevin O'Brien. Um, on the outside, we got Jonas Hankins. Row number seven, Jordan Beck and Andrew Packer bringing up the rear. Uh, Raymond Edge is not in the race. He just uh, did some practice laps uh, earlier on. Uh, these guys are coming to the green, man. I think, uh, I think these guys are hopefully going to surprise me. We're going to get some green flag laps and uh, some hard racing. Yeah, it's going to be good. I, and like I said, the speed is going to be there. So we'll definitely have to see how this one uh, turns out as I get ready to go. Green flag. Good start there by Nate LaFleur going into one with Calvin Allison on the outside. Looks like Calvin's going to just drop in line here. And uh, doesn't look like anybody's going to be too aggressive out of the start. And they uh, really get in line. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's much di different than the practice. They did some uh, starting practice, lined up uh, two by two during practice, and they ran really hard. And I think they knew that uh, they'd have to take it a little bit more conservative in a race to keep things on the track. It's interesting. We see uh, we were talking about Josh Buckley earlier, and he's, uh, he's already at the bumper of uh, John Fershing Jr. just in front of him there. And I'm curious, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys experienced it at all, uh, but when the car behind you is getting close, it definitely can uh, make that back end a little bit loose. I don't know if the guys were talking about it this evening, if you guys had heard about that. But Yeah, these guys definitely talked about it. Um, we had a couple incidents under practice that where it actually did affect the cars, and we d did see some spin-outs. 
Yeah, I mean, it just really takes the air off the back end of the car, and the car gets loose, and, uh, you know, you don't, you've only got a, you know, fractions of a second to compensate to get it uh, straightened out before the guy behind you gets into you uh, if they don't come off the gas. So makes it interesting. So those two up front have really kind of broken away from the uh, three behind them. You know, uh, Nate LeFleur, Calvin Allison, they're really putting down some fast laps here. Yeah, I think that's what we want to see. These guys kind of want to just gap the field. They may um, they may stay in line, not race too hard. I know Calvin's the type of guy that he'll only push as hard as he can to keep up with you, and then he's going to start saving fuel. So it should be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I would agree. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see uh, either... I don't know. Do you? I was going to go with uh, two tires, but um, I don't think anybody's going to be as bold to go with no tires and just fuel. Do you? Man, I don't. I, don't, I always like tires. At least give me two, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I some right side tires I think would go a long way here. But I, I'm, I would uh, only imagine that we're going to see some quick pit stops tonight. Got some good hard racing going on for uh, fourth place. Uh, Joshua Buckley is behind the 915. Um, looks like he's uh, trying to figure out how he can get around him cleanly. I know that these guys... Oh, we have a caution. Looks like Ricky Goodman was involved there. Let's see if we can take a look at that replay. Yeah, it looks like Ricky Goodman and Jordan Beck may have gotten uh, together there. Hard to tell. Yeah, Jordan Beck looks like he lost it and collected for Ricky Goodman. So we'll have to take a look at that replay. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, just over radio communication, sounds like Jordan Beck got back to the throttle a little too quick and Got loose and uh, kind of overcorrected just a little bit, you know, just racing hard there, and just Ricky just unfortunately got called up. Yeah, Ricky was off the pace a little bit, trying to stay out of everyone's way. He got a little high, and uh, that I've never seen a car turn around like that. That was crazy watching uh, Jordan just. <laughs> you gotta watch the replay. It it just snapped off, off the start finish line. That's. Uh, you got yeah, some that's... interesting takers here. It looks like Nate LaFleur and Josh Buckley stay out and everybody else is coming in. Yeah, I don't know if you had seen Dustin too, but it looked like Jordan uh, put those tires down underneath that wide line coming out of four and, and uh, it seemed like he, the car wasn't the same and then uh, got a little bit more <laughs> wild around the start-finish line, so that made it interesting. But uh, I'm sure they'll get it uh, repaired and get back out there. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he got a little bit loose, and it just ever so loose, and then uh, maybe a bit of overcorrection, and you're right, it just snapped to the right. And um, They'll get it all taken care of. I'm sure they'll get back on the track. We got eight laps under our belts. We did have a couple there you go. people stay out there. Looks like Tim Lewis won the race off of pit road there. Might have been two tires. I didn't get a check on that. Tim did take two tires, yeah. So did Brent Rogers. Uh, Tim was just a little bit quicker than Brent. Uh, we... Josh Fershing, John Fershing Jr. took two as well with a 9.1 um, second pit stop. Kevin Kevin O'Brien only uh, 5.1 second pit stop. So I think uh, you're probably a fuel only there, Jamie. I think you called that one. Yeah, you know it might have been a little bit earlier in the in the race. Uh, I don't think he's got uh, too much to to lose. Um, and what we've seen from Kevin in the past is, you know, he's kind of reserved there during the beginning and the middle of the race, but he always seems to find himself, you know, looking for some, uh, you know, top 10, top 5 um, uh, finish towards the end of the race. So I, I think that kind of plays right into his wheelhouse there. So, Well, just as we speak of it, he comes back down pit road <laughs> and looks like he's going to pick up four tires. So, um and no little splash of fuel, so, um, you know, maybe just a little mi miscommunication with his uh, pit crew there. Didn't have the tires ready on the wall, not sure, but he come back down the second time and they got four on him. So what do you think of that first row, Calvin Allison, Nate LaFleur, uh, and even, you know, third place Joshua Buckley? What do you think about them staying out? I don't oh, think I, it hurts know, them. 
Yeah, you're right, Jamie. I, I think um, these guys, uh, uh, they know how to manage their tires pretty well. We've seen that they can go a good little while. Um, we'll just have to see on this first run after the guys behind them getting all four how uh, how they get going here. But like the uh, lights are out on the pace car, so. Yeah, pace car is going to jump in right here. We're going to be back to green. And green flag. Let's see how these guys do in entering first. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they go uh, single file again, but it, it looks like everybody got a good start here, and they're going to have to handle it two by two. Wow, Tim is uh, right on that quarter panel of Josh Buckley, um, just keeping him uh, pushed down just a little bit. Looks like there's not enough room for him to slide up, so they're going to enter turn three, two wide, two back. Yeah, Tim with a good run here on the outside. Calvin dives in underneath Nate. I was thinking Tim had the preferred line there, just on the little bit on the higher side, but uh, he might have a good run here off of two. Buckley's definitely doesn't have enough to clear him, so as Tim gets a good run down the back stretch. Yeah, I don't know about you, but that that when you're being held down to the inside like that, it can really upset the car. You're worried about getting loose. You're worried about sliding up into the car uh, above you. These guys do a great job keeping it all together as they get in line here. Yeah, guys, good point there. You see, it's the two leaders, the two guys that didn't take um, fuel. I mean, it didn't stop for fuel or tires, uh, breaking away just a little bit, but really putting pressure on each other. It's good to see them race up front like that. Now, I'm curious about some of these guys uh, in the middle to the rear of the pack. You know, you look at Brent Rogers, you look at Mike Abbott, uh, some of those drivers. Uh, I, I can't tell if they're not being all really aggressive or if they're just kind of hanging out to see how it plays out. It, what do you think? I don't know about you, but 133 laps, man, uh, only two quick repairs. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if some of these guys hang back. I know Mike Abbott's a smart racer, uh, even Brent Rogers. Uh, these guys think with their head here. and uh, You don't have to be fighting for the win on lap 20. Yeah, I'm totally going to agree with you, Mike. I think a lot of these guys um, realize they've seen some of the races we've had here in the past. And, um Take care of your stuff is priority number one, and uh, there's def definitely different agendas tonight. There's guys racing for a championship, and you got guys that are racing for a win. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be whoever uh, decide uh, to save their stuff the most. As you're talking there, Jonas Hankins just gets a little bit loose off of two, keeps it uh, keeps it together, no caution. You know, did you guys watch the Michigan race? Talking to, talking about keeping guys' uh, stuff together. That start of the Michigan race, Kyle Busch, uh, I believe it was Kyle Busch, started that race like 20, 20 car lengths behind the field. He just came over the radio and said, these guys are going to wreck going into one. And uh, sure enough, there was an incident, and, you know, he drives by slowly. He knew, knew exactly what was going to go on, and he <laughs> didn't want to be a part of it. No, I, I missed that. I did watch the race, but I, I don't recall seeing that. But... Uh... It's probably out getting a soda or something. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing he had going for him is they had a competition caution at 20, so they knew that they didn't really have to push hard, that there would be a caution. So who cares if you uh, if you don't start that? If you're starting from the back anyways, uh, might as well start way from the back. And we just seen Nate LaFleur just all over the back of uh, Calvin Ellison there. I thought he was going to try to make it work, and actually now that he tried that, uh, he's fallen back a little bit and almost fallen into the clutches of uh, Josh Buckley. Let's go yeah, you're right, man. Uh, I think Buckley is definitely hungry tonight, so i um, looking forward to him having a good race and uh, really just saving his stuff for the end. You know he's always there at the end, so looking forward to seeing how this turns out, these guys being fast early. Yeah, Nate LaFleur, Josh Buckley, these guys are our teammates. They do run together a lot, and I'm sure we'll see Josh You know, probably pull up to the back of Nate. I don't think he's going to really push the issue. I don't think he's going to say, I need to get by right now. Uh, riding on board with him, you can you can hear that he's he's out of the throttle mid-corner. Um, he's not running super hard right here. Um, just kind of, these guys are, are happy with just running around and being being where they need to be as we get closer on. Looks like Calvin got a little bit loose on that corner. We might see Nate pick up some time here. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, I've been watching Allison here for the last couple laps, and I've noticed... Um, 
in uh, in a couple of the corners there. He's been uh, he's been putting those left side tires underneath that white line, which uh, usually is kind of a, a danger zone for uh, some drivers. But he seems to be able to manage it. You can definitely see the two different lines running on board with Nate right here. You can see that he's not he's not really through the corners running in Calvin's tire tracks. He's a little bit higher. Calvin's going a little bit lower. Uh, well, these guys are pretty close here. Nate does get off the throttle a little bit earlier, it looks like, and kind of drifts out and is able to suck up during the straights. Um, these guys are running um, times that are almost dead on to each other. Nate's a little bit quicker the last couple laps. Yeah, Nate's definitely fast out there. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, I'd be uh, lying if I didn't say, got my eye on that uh, fourth place car there and Tim Lewis. I think he's going to be, <laughs> he's, uh, he's hanging with him. It'll be interesting, too, to see if these two stay out uh, a little bit longer with Allison and Lafleur. Uh, you know, if they're going to stay out there under green flag conditions, we're definitely going to see cars on uh, different pit strategies. And uh, that could play in their favor towards the later part of the race. Yeah, these guys are going to have to think about coming in soon. I don't know what the pit or the fuel window is, but it's probably somewhere between 25, 30 laps, um, just going from the size of the track. So these guys are probably going to be thinking about coming in, and um, they're going to want to have everything cycle around because they're probably going to be put a lap down so caution coming out would not be good for them yeah you mentioned a good point there uh, I, I really think the fuel windows are maybe around 21 22 we're at lap 23 now but uh, with that caution that might have extended it just a little bit more for these guys so we'll be looking for them to come down pit road here shortly i'm sure yeah, you're right. They did run three, three or four laps under caution, and you know, caution laps you can get an extra every every two caution laps or so is an extra green flag lap. So these guys are going to stretch it. Well, Nate, uh, Nate pushed that exit. He almost uh, touched that back corner against the wall on exit there. No, I was I've noticed. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Notice that Nate, uh, he was doing that in practice too, man. He could really get he could get about everything he could out of this car tonight. So. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see him see him do that probably all night and um, still be able to save his stuff and he didn't even look like he lost anything there so he's really done a good job controlling that car tonight. I don't know if you've uh, guys have checked lately, but I've just checked the in car uh, on Jordan Beck. I noticed he's got quite a bit of damage on the front end of that car, and uh, he's kind of like a wounded duck out there. He's probably going to need to get that uh, that car fixed here pretty quick. Yeah, the rear of the car as well is kind of banged up all around. So he's uh, he's had a bit of contact already. Um, I wonder if he used, he must have used a quick repair that last time in. Um, but yeah, just trying to turn some laps, get some experience, which we uh, we like to see from our driver. So it's good that he's you know hasn't just quit the race. He's not in anyone's ray right here. He's just kind of trying to get some experience, which uh, which is good. Yeah, just as you were talking, uh, Nate Vlor again getting the most out of his car, coming off a of four, got into the wall a little bit. And Gapping him, gapping him a little bit between Calvin, so still wondering how this, uh, how much more fuel these guys got here. Let's take a look as Nate goes by. We'll look at it, at that corner panel, see if we see any damage. Looks like, uh, looks like the car's okay. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy on that rear quarter panel. So he's just, he's flirting with the wall real good, but he's keeping his, uh, he's keeping his times competitive. Looks like John Pershing Jr. Uh, back there in, uh, was it, sixth position. He's kind of got uh, a couple cars right behind him. Um, seems like that seems to be the uh, second second pack here. Yeah, he's, uh, he just made the pass on the number eight, uh, Brent Rogers, for fifth. So he's, uh, you know, as things start to cycle through, he may be in the catbird seat here. Reeling in uh, Tim Lewis, maybe. Yeah, Tim Lewis is the first car that actually pit, so he's, you know, Tim Lewis is going to be the leader here. As soon as these guys pit, he's going to pick up that bonus point. John is fighting for that championship, so he's going to be wanting to try and get up there and pass Tim, so maybe pick up a bonus point on his own. Looks like the 28 will be coming down pit road this time. All three guys look like they'll be coming <laughs> down pit road here. 
which is going to be interesting because they're going to be coming into the pit under green. Let's see if they can uh, get her done. Nate gets in there real hot. Wow, that could be the move there. He's going to have to give each other room as they come into paint. Nate's got it slowed down. Hopefully he didn't pick up a speeding penalty. They all get in pretty clean, though. Excellent entry by LaFleur there. See what these guys do on the track here. I'm sure we're going to see two tires. Tim came in too. That's surprising to me. Yeah, that's going to get Fershing uh, the lead there. So definitely going to pick up that bonus point. Oh, looks like everyone else except Calvin takes four tires. That's um, that's, that's interesting. A bold move. Yeah. Uh, not sure. Nate looks like he's uh, getting some repairs done from that wall he tapped a little earlier. To check, check in on that. It's kind of expected, though. I mean, we talk about it week after week, but uh, Kelvin's pretty notorious for uh, going with only two. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have called that a mile away. I'm surprised the guys behind him didn't uh, didn't go on that same strategy. Maybe they figure they're setting themselves up for later on. If they take four tires now, maybe next time they take two, where they they feel that um, Calvin will be forced to take four. But you know, if I know Calvin, man, he'll take two all night. It'll be interesting, too, to see how these guys react because now some of them are in traffic and they're going to have to deal with that where they were, you know, previously just running single file. Yeah, as we just saw the uh, Ada Brent Otters get into the wall off of four there. Like he got a little bit of damage. Yeah, a little bit of, little bit of wrinkle on that front end. So that you were, oh, I was just gonna say you were right, Mike. I mean, John Pershing Jr. has got that lead, uh, picked up that bonus point, didn't he? Yeah, he's he's picked up that point, and you know he's fighting right now with his son, uh, Nate Lafleur, and and Nate really cautions out. Caution is out. I think that was Kevin. Like Andrew Packer. No. Oh. Andrew Packer involved as well, maybe. Ooh, I see a bunch of off tracks here. No, uh, what we have, what happened there? It looks like uh, Packer lost it off of uh, turn four there, and what you saw out of Kevin was him avoiding. He went through the grass. Yeah, a lot of guys went underneath Packer there. I mean, he hit the wall and went in the grass and put it back up uh, on that low line, if you will, of the of the track. So. <laughs> Always makes it uh, interesting uh, when a car comes out of the grass and back up into the track. Definitely don't want to see that. Uh, and Andrew's definitely got some uh, some damage there as we see some smoke coming out of the back end of that car. It'd be interesting to see the pit, uh, pit strategy here. You know, you might see uh, a couple guys come down pit road. Um, Allison stays out, which kind of figured, but... Um... We're going to see if guys are going to take two or four here. Just watching uh, on board with uh, Timothy Lewis as uh, him and Joshua Buckley drive underneath Andrew Packer. Man, those guys did a good job keeping it all together. That's a scary sight seeing a car bounce off the wall right in front of you and not know where to go. Good job on those guys. And I believe Ricky Goodman should have gotten one of his laps back this time. Uh, I don't believe he was involved in the incident. I believe, uh, I think you're right. He might have gotten an off track. Uh, no, it doesn't look like he did, so hopefully he does get that lap back. Yeah, I, I mean, I know he was down, uh, I believe, two laps, and so this will at least get one of those back. So I do see a couple people lap down, though. Nate LaFleur, uh, Jordan Beck, so they might get priority. Unless my thing's just messed up, which is quite possible. No, I uh, I see what you're seeing to a certain extent. Uh, I'm showing that, uh, well, as of right now, as it runs, that Nate LaFleur, Jordan Beck, and Ricky Goodman are all... Uh, In front of the leader there, yep. Yeah. 
Jordan Beck did come into pit road, though, so that's going to prevent him from getting the wave around here. Um, Ricky Goodman and Nate Fleur, Nate Lafleur should both get a wave around as the uh, as we come to one to go. Tim Lewis as well. You know, not why while we have a second uh, and under caution. You know, I was looking at the 555 of Butch Frazier. Um, Butch, the uh, Butcher Frazier, I think is uh, the nickname as he goes by. But, uh, you know, Butch has uh, been really putting on a show here lately, too. He's been running uh, up there up front. Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike and Dustin, uh, I believe he was uh, top three podium um, last week. I yeah, believe you're, right. you're correct, yeah. Second. Yeah, I mean, uh, and so he's been making a heck of an improvement and uh, I know you've talked about it before in the past. Both of you guys have about the nine or the extra numbers that they're running. Uh, but is uh, is the 555 the actual number of Butch Frazier, or is he going to go down to the 55 here? Uh, no, he, he chose the 555. That's the number he wants to run. Um, it's a number that means something to him, apparently, and uh, all right. I'm all for that. So the nine is the one that gives you that that probationary quote-unquote probationary status the five is just symbolic doesn't mean anything so he's welcome to run that number if he pleases yeah and i, I know Mike. we have a i know we have uh the 10 of uh 10 open just in case anybody wants what up no i was gonna say the five does mean something oh what does it mean five-time senior citizen. Look at his picture. <laughs> You're just mean. He would laugh his ass off about it, though. All right, I'll tell him you called him old. I'll do it. I don't care. As we were talking about it, uh, Allison uh, ducked back down to get those four tires, so he'll be starting from the back, but I'm sure he won't be there long. Yeah, it's a good opportunity for him to come in and uh, get his tires for sure. Uh, Raymond had some insight on Brent's 555 number. Interesting. Let's no, hear about it. that would be the Butcher's 555. Well, right. And that is the five-time senior citizen number, if you guys didn't know that. Or maturity, however you want to look at it. <laughs> so 55 <laughs> is, the, is the senior citizen number, and he's five times 55. Exactly. I get it. He's an old man is what he's saying. Said here, Butch. I didn't say it. I didn't say he was old. All right, back to green. <laughs> All right. See these guys uh, run into one. We got uh, some some good side by side racing going on. Mike Abbott on the outside. Inside we got James Skelton, uh, John Fersing Jr. is getting a push here by James. Oh no! And uh, Buckley got into. Uh, I believe it was uh, Tim Lewis back there with Andrew Packer on the outside. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, he got any damage out of that, but they definitely had contact. Seen a little smoke there. Car looks okay from my camera view. We'll uh, we'll have to wait and see if he can keep his time, but I don't see any damage there on Josh. Now we look at the battle up front. Mike Abbott and James Skeleton and John Fersen fighting it hard. They all want to lead a lap here. Oh no! Ooh, Skeleton. Skeleton gets loose. Mike puts it. Uh, gets off the. Oh, almost saved it. Right in front of everybody. Oh, Josh Buckley involved. Tim Lewis involved. Andrew Packer involved. Well, that's a oh, big one that, at lap 40. Yeah, <sighs> that's a big one. And I believe Andrew Packer just got done using a quick repair there. <laughs> that's not going to turn out very well for him. I'm telling you guys, it looks like uh, Fershing's really uh, looking out on this uh, thing being up front here and that, having the caution fail. All we did on the last time to be able to uh, stay up, stay up front. Just looking at this replay, you can see here James out front gets a little bit loose, uh, collects it, but by the time Mike's there, he can't get off of him. Looks like he collects it. Mike gives him room, but he's got Andrew or Jonas on the outside, so now we're three wide, bouncing off cars and. Uh, that's just unfortunate. Gets in and just finishes the job, but puts Mike right in front of the field, and uh, cars are just scrambling. Butch just barely drives through it, and uh, got a couple of drivers that get collected. So, um, you know, that's why we have quick repairs. Uh, hopefully, these guys can get their stuff sorted out and uh, get back on track. I hate to see these guys uh, 
get taken out on an incident like that, especially uh, Joshua Buckley really had nothing to do with it, just kind of got um, collected in it. Yeah, I got caught up in uh, the stuff in front of him. Yeah, that was a pretty nasty accident, you know, and that at that kind of speed, you know, I was looking at Tim Lewis uh, having Buckley and uh, those wreck in front of him. Um, even if he hit on the, you know, hit the brakes hard, you're, you're going right in. You're in it. Okay. No, they're cool. I've already gone up there. I've already gone up there. James, James actually apologized. He said, guys, I'm sorry. I just freaking got loose. Yeah, cool. All right, cool. With uh, eight getting the pole tonight, that's his extra bonus point. And um, Pershing right now, you know, looking good early. So um, we'll have to see and keep a track of him. But um, definitely uh, in the right direction here tonight. Well, just looking at these these scores here, Nate Nate and John, like I said, battling. Uh, James Skelton, he's six points back, and being collected in that race is going to set him back. But right now, uh, you know, he can he can still make up some positions. Him and Nate are almost side by side, so he really needs to get out in front of Nate. That should be his goal. Um, but with John Fershing Jr. leading the race, he's kind of controlling his own destiny right here. If he uh, if he can keep it up front, man, uh, it's going to be a tough one to uh, to beat. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I'll tell you one thing. Um, never count out Nate or Buckley, even though getting having a little trouble there. You know, those guys always seem to find a way to be there at the end. So uh, definitely race a long way away, away, long way from being over, but uh, definitely uh, in Fershing's hands. Now, did Rogers come in for a pit stop? Did you guys see? I did not see him come in. He's um, He has pit three times, though. Well, I was going to say, because I know when, when Abbott was spinning, Rogers got into him. But uh, in taking a close-up look of that car, I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, damage on that 8. So either he did and got it fixed, or um, he didn't sustain a whole lot of damage, and it was just a slight contact there with the uh, uh, car of Mike Abbott. I don't think he uh, used a quick repair, because the front end is really dirty on that car. And usually when you use a quick repair, I believe it cleans it up. So... Um... I think you're right. I think he got lucky, maybe not too much damage, and uh, he's able to keep it rolling. I could yeah, be we'll totally wrong about that, that, that dirtiness thing. So with fuel strategy probably on people's minds, uh, you know, we've talked about different things that the drivers can do to get an advantage, uh, you know, whether it's the steering ratio or the um, whatever it may be. But um, I'm curious. Uh, I've heard some of these drivers talk about some of the apps that they're using um, in, in the car. So uh, what have you guys heard? What, what seems to be the most popular? Well, I know V1 Dashboard's always been pretty popular. It does fuel calculations, gives you a bunch of information. That's what I used. Um, great little program. Um, I know, I don't know, there is some fuel mileage stuff that you can use as well. I don't use anything else. Uh, Dustin, do you have any uh, comments about stuff as we go back to green? Yeah, we're definitely going back to green. Uh, iFuel uh, works pretty good. It's a pretty good app, but like you said, uh, um, quite a few different apps, and I'm not sure exactly what some of these other guys use. Um, I've heard of Fuel Buddy. Here. Fuel Buddy, I've heard of it. Fuel as well. Buddy's awesome. All right, we got a big bunch of cars right now running really hard side by side, first through seventh here. Uh, looks like they're going to try and make it three wide as Timothy Lewis is thinking about going up the middle. Thought that looks better dangerous. of it. Yeah, I thought better of it. You know, Nate Lafleur finds himself in traffic, and he's got, you know, packed freeway in front of him here. Go ahead and ride on board with Nate as he uh, looks at these cars battling out in front of him. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not seeing that high line work when you're running too wide. It seems like the car down below is is able to be more successful. I agree. Yeah, I want to think back to last race. Uh, it's definitely the opposite. Remember the all-star race we had yeah. here? Um, definitely the high side seemed to be uh, where the freight train was going. But tonight, um, whoever's on the bottom seems to have a little bit of that advantage. 
Wow, that was a run that Nate got in uh, to kind of dived under uh, the aid of Cowboy Rogers there, but uh, keeps it below, doesn't make any contact. See what happens going into three. Nate does have a little bit of uh, right quarter panel damage up there. It looks like the hood might be buckled in a bit, so he has definitely made some contact at some point. Looks like he's still turning pretty quick laps, but... Um, yeah, he's not going to be as quick as the leaders with that damage as he tries to go. He's trying to figure out how to get around the 8 car here. Yeah, he had a good run there coming out of 2. The one we hadn't talked much about tonight is uh, Jonas Hankins. I mean, he's sitting there in second just biding his time and clicking laps off. Um, really looking good tonight. He's got he's got a lot of pressure here by Allison though. It looks like Allison's going to go underneath him. Oh yeah, those those uh, fresh four Allison's got. He looks like he's going to easily come back up here to the front. And once again that low line, but I can't believe how Allison can put those two tires almost right underneath that yellow line um, and keep the car together. That's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Calvin Allison is like the forty second cousin of. Uh, Davy Allison, so he might have a little bit of Davy riding with him tonight. Uh -huh. Runs in the blood there, eh? Oh, yeah. So someone in the chat room, I believe that's uh, Raymond in the chat room, has uh, corrected me and said that the um, the dirt does build over the race and doesn't get removed. So uh, I, I've never really noticed that before, but that's uh, some good insight there. Do have some side-by-side -side racing going on with uh, Kevin O'Brien and the 994, sorry, that's 994 to Kevin O'Brien and the uh, 986 of James Skelton, looking like James is trying to run around the inside. He'll make that pass pretty cleanly here. Yeah, James hey, is a really... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, we were talking about Tim Lewis a little earlier. Um, got caught up in that wreck just a minute ago, but he's... Uh... Back up to fourth and really about to put some pressure on Hankins here. He's uh, really got a fast car here tonight. Yeah, I love that paint paint scheme, that Budweiser black and red. Uh, looks really good on that car. Uh, you're right, he's definitely um, just wheeling him in. He's going uh, he's gonna to be putting a pass down on him uh, probably this turn, maybe the next turn. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, info on that paint scheme. I think uh, Jeremy Patterson over there uh, red light league that we run with uh, did that paint for him at the beginning of the season and uh, it's definitely been uh, pretty good to him I think about every show out he's had a decent run so uh, be looking forward to another one tonight yeah he's consistently got better throughout the season I've uh, seen him you know racing for wins and, and getting uh, getting on up you know throughout the season so it's good to see him uh, having a good night here with uh, on lap 54 he's uh, he's charging right now his previous lap there, you know, not quite as fast as the leaders. Obviously, he was making a pass, but now that he's got some clean airs, he's going to be thinking about how he can catch these guys in front of him. And these guys oh, from yeah, High Rev and uh, Lafleur and Buckley, uh, those four have been going at it for the last couple laps. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but that's that's some pretty intense action going on there in the middle of the field. Yeah, I was just about to comment on that. Uh, F Jamie, it's funny you mentioned those guys were racing pretty hard. I was about to talk about the battle back behind that. Um, really, really good, clean racing tonight. But, you know, it's the line, Dustin, right? I mean, it's just it, it seems like the, the guy behind has got the run, but the car in front of him is in the line that they need to uh, get off that corner fast, and it's holding them up. Yeah, Nate was able to get a nose there coming out of four and, and kind of secured that inside line. Uh, Mike's doing everything he can. Oh! Wow, I can't believe that there was... Uh... Whoa, man! <laughs> oh, buddy, that was nuts. And, uh, I can't believe everybody kept it on track. There's some good uh, caution avoidance there by our drivers. Yeah, that was really close there. I think Josh Buckley was going to see his second incident tonight and was able to somehow get through that and then also stay uh, in front of the car behind him, which was checking up. So a uh, little bit of craziness going on. 
I thought initial contact was between the 981 of Nate Lafleur and the 8 of Calvin, or sorry, of uh, Cowboy Rogers, I believe, right? Did uh, anybody see it go down? I don't think I saw it. Yeah, it was between uh, Lafleur and, and uh, Abbott, and uh, they got uh, got into each other a little bit there, uh, just trying to search for position. Yeah, it, Nate got a little bit a uh, little bit loose there, and then did a good job of saving it. And of course, you know, catching a guy once he's trying to catch it like that, he just you know unintentional but definitely got into him a little bit and Buckley I think almost got the worst of that by getting in the back of uh yeah he had to get way off the gas on that. yeah James Skelton just weaving in and out of traffic to make uh make a whole bunch of passes at once there that was pretty impressive Calvin Allison's closing that gap to John Fershing. They're about to point two seconds back. Uh, just checking in on these leaders. Still turning some pretty quick times. Uh, they are definitely, the two of them are the fastest cars on the track. Uh, just trying to gap the field here a little bit. Going to be thinking about, oh, we got a caution. Jordan Beck. And uh, looks like Nate LaFleur there. I see but Butch Frazier as well. Let's take a look. Yeah, over, uh, seems like over the radio, uh, Nate LaFleur says he uh, just lost it there, um, collecting a few guys. He's tough break for him, man. Um, we'll see him get hopefully get this car fixed and get back out there. Yeah, he definitely got loose coming out of that corner and uh, collected about three other ones there as a result, uh, Kevin O'Brien and uh, a couple of Butch Frazier and someone else there. Yeah, he almost caught it, but uh, just overcorrected it a little bit. Oh, right up into the 994 of Kevin O'Brien, and comes down to hit the 904 of Jordan Beck. And uh, Jordan Beck uh, went for a wild ride there on his hood, and uh, looks like Butch almost made it through. Uh, just tapped and uh, took him out as well. So uh, it's unfortunate. This is a tough track, man. We don't talk about it enough. It, it coming off of four, um, coming off of two can be a real challenge. But we're pretty much seeing everybody come into pit road. I've seen Allison get four tires. Uh, looks like the car's uh, back on the track. And I'm pretty sure Lafleur had to be towed after that one. Yeah, he is sitting yeah, in his box, so you're probably right. I think he has been towed. There you go, uh, Tim Lewis. I wasn't paying attention that time, but it, uh, he wins the race for the second time tonight off pit road. Uh, good job by that pit crew tonight. They're really, uh, really on it. Yeah, it was a good stop for him. He did take four tires. Um, was able to uh, tuck back in. <laughs> Look at that. Who's uh, who's running up front right now? Ricky Goodman looking to probably get a bonus point or two right now. He's he's thinking about locking up that uh, non-chase driver uh, position, get himself a cool $10 in iRacing credits here. Yeah, our two-time winner. Yeah, who would have thought at the job. beginning of the season we would have said Ricky Goodman, two-time winner, uh, iRacing uh, or NAPSCAR Pro Series. That's, that's pretty good stuff right there. Did you have... Did you have a doubt, Mike? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just to just to clear it up, guys. Uh, if to our viewers that don't know, uh, Ricky and Mike uh, are pretty good friends um, yeah. outside of our racing. So um, they they joke on each other all the time. But yeah, I like to I like to give Ricky's really for sure. done a good job this year. So. Yeah, for sure. He's one of the smartest drivers uh, on the track. He's always thinking fuel mileage. He's always thinking how he can put himself in position to win races. And uh, you know what? You can't take those wins away from him. Those wins are wins. So, you know, he might not have uh, raced by for that, that first place victory, but you think it with your head and, and giving yourself a fuel mileage victory or, or doing what you got to do to make sure that you're in position to win at the end of a race, it's more important than anything else you can do. So uh, good on him for sure. But he's gonna he's gonna be busy here because uh, you know Tim Lewis, John Fershing Jr., uh, Skelton, and uh, Brent Rogers. Um, they're gonna give him a run for his money, and nobody's laying back here. So it'll be interesting to see how he uh, how he handles this. I mean, the yeah, last this restart's gonna be important. Yeah, I would agree. You know, and the thing of it is, is 
the one place you don't want to have an incident is at the front of the field right, right. on a restart because everybody's going to be piling into you. So uh, it's going to it's going to get interesting here. And it looks like uh, Ricky chooses the outside. Yeah, it looks like uh, he does choose the outside line. He might be thinking about how he can try and not hold up these guys. So he might uh, want to just get out there and get that bonus point. Now he's going to be thinking about uh, how he can not cause any issues. And maybe he's going to take that high line and, and try and let uh, these guys go underneath him. We'll see how it plays out. I I don't see how that's going to play out well. Because if going into one, if he goes to the high side and everybody goes underneath him, he's still probably going to have cars coming out of two. And they're going to want to be in that high line coming out of two. And so it's gonna, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't see that going very well by just pulling over to the right hand side. If you if you can't, oh, he's got it. To, if if I'm Ricky Goodman, I've got to stay in the gas and uh, let let it uh, let guys get lined up. We're gonna ride this restart on board with James Skelton. We're gonna take a look at the front window and see what he sees when these guys go back to green here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm puckering. Yep. <laughs> And we're back to green. Looks like uh, everyone gets on the gas pretty good. Jonas Hankins gets a pretty good shot. He's right up on the, on the bumper of Cowboy there. Going into one. And the top line's backing up. Hankins in Hank the wall. Off the two. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, that's basically exactly what you said happened. I know um, Rick had... Uh, he had best of thoughts there. It actually pulled out pretty good. He didn't do too bad, and the cars are off and in line already. It's amazing, though, how that one little change can have these guys in line so quick. First lap, these guys are in line, where all the previous restarts, uh, everyone was racing really hard. Tim Lewis is going to get a uh, bonus point here tonight. Yeah, he's got two laps under his belt leading. Uh, John Fershing Jr. second place and uh, James Skelton, my boy, right there in third. So hopefully uh, see him fight for uh, for a first place and we'll get get some more bonus points for him for as well. And Dustin had called it earlier. I mean, look who's uh, running fifth, Josh Buckley. Yeah, he did a good job considering how, how long he was on pit road there, um, back in fifth place. Um, actually, you know what? He's not in fifth. He is a lap down sitting in 10th. Oh, he is. Okay. But he's in position. Next caution, get that uh, get that lucky dog, and he'll be running uh, running back up there when he can. He's showing that he's got speed for sure. Is Abbott back on the lead lap? Uh, I have him one lap down as well. Oh, you're right. So Mike Abbott is, uh, I believe. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. No, Mike Abbott's a lap down. Uh, Josh Buckley is two laps down. And so is Nate Lafleur, and uh, Kevin O'Brien, and Andrew Packer, and Jordan Beck is four laps down. Yeah, so it's a good battle here for the first car lap down between Buckley and uh, Abbott at the moment. So they're side by side. So correct me if I'm wrong, though. If there's only one car lap, one lap down, they automatically get it. Doesn't matter if there's a car in front of you that's two laps down. So, yeah, I believe that's yeah. right. Yeah, in theory, that's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, right. Theory. But you never know with iRacing. Yep, iRacing is all theory. Don't get me wrong, I love iRacing. It, uh, it's a great great simulator, does a great job, provides us with the tools we need to have a, have a series the way we do, so um, good on them. I'd just like to see them uh, throw some improvements out there in time. So John Fershing Jr. made that pass, went around Timothy Lewis back out front. Looks like he's uh, he's opened the gap up to about two seconds. As I say that, though, Timothy Lewis, Lewis has got a good run off of four here. He's uh, closing that gap as well. James Skelton, third place. Kelvin Allison, fourth. Brent Rogers in fifth to round out our top five. And Mike Abbott, uh, just a w little bit ago, uh, lost a couple positions there as he got the bottom of the car down uh, underneath that uh, line in the corner. And it got loose, but was able to recover. But he, he definitely uh, uh, took a hit there um, when that happened. I just, I just like to make a point while we're sitting here riding and watching uh, the top three or the top three we picked tonight. So uh, good, good call by you guys. Uh, yeah. Definitely a close battle up front here. It makes us think we know what we're talking about. Probably, uh, probably not a good thing. Well, are we going to let Raymond make a pick? <laughs> 
Yeah, Raymond joined us up in the booth. You want to make a pick like 71 laps into the race? All right, who, who was everybody else's pick? We pick one through three right now. Oh, well, in that case, I'm, I'm picking the 28. <laughs> yeah, right? You're going to go with the fourth? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pick. He's charging back up through the field pretty Yeah, good. he is. He's looking how uh, figure out how he can get around... Uh, Nate LaFleur, he's going to do that uh, pretty well right here. Nate gives him as much room as he needs. Wow, gets a little bit loose. Nate powers back. Nate gets a little uh, wiggle there, too. So Yeah, he did. He got, he got him <laughs> yeah. up in a little wiggle. <laughs> Calvin's on a mission. Look at how quick he's running. He ran a 28.8. Uh, that last lap, the, the car in front of him ran a 28.9. So he is collect, uh, catching up. Uh, the two leaders are still running faster, but Calvin was battling with uh, with Nate at the time, so that's pretty respectable. Timothy Lewis gets a little bit of a wiggle there as well. Yeah, Calvin Allison on a mission now. Looks like he's his march back to towards the front here. But Dustin, you gotta, I gotta ask you a question. You know, as a, you know, as a former driver, you know, you look at Nate Lafleur. He's he's had a couple incidents tonight. Uh, he seems to really be, you know. I, I'm not driving the car with Nate, but he seems to be overdriving it just a little bit. You know, how much is that playing into, you know, a mental game here and, and uh, <laughs> affecting him? You know, I definitely think it puts a little bit in the back of your mind. You know, you, you want to push hard to get there, but you know you've got to keep your stuff together for the end. And, um, you know, Nate right now is two laps down. Uh, still good little ways to go. Uh, you know, you know Nate. He'll be around at the end somehow. And, uh you know, just keep an eye on him and uh, keep his car up underneath him and uh, be there at the end. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see that close battle uh, right down to the last lap, I think, for this points battle. Josh is not wasting no time getting one of his laps back either. No, he's definitely a fashion way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, he has to right now because you know, being two laps down, he's he can't rely on that lucky dog because Mike Abbott's got the you know he's only one lap down, so he's going to try and get around these leaders, hope for a caution, um, and then be set up for that next uh, that next caution. But he's got some work to do. These guys in front of him are super super fast, and obviously. Um, you know, Josh doesn't want to kind of ruin anyone's race battling for a lap position here. Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing, though. You know, these guys aren't just going to roll over and give him the position. In fact, they want to see him back there. Uh, they don't want to have to oh, yeah. deal. Like, yeah, they don't want to have to deal with Josh Buckley uh, with uh, 10 to go uh, on the lead lap. To be completely honest, though, they're dealing with him right now. So if you're if you're one two and you got Joshua Buckley two laps down behind you. Um, and he's not really he's not really something you need to worry about right now. Are you gonna let him by just so you don't have to deal with him or are you gonna just try and keep him behind you so you don't think you have to deal with him at the end of the race? You keep him behind you, yeah. period. <laughs> yeah, you definitely wanna keep Josh Buckley off the lead lap as much as possible because uh the man always seems to show up at the end of a race and hopefully will one. So we'll definitely uh them boys are probably fighting hard to keep him uh as far behind him as they can. Yeah, and that you know, that goes to say I like he he might be being really respectable or uh, respectful right now, but if he's on the lead lap and we're you know ten to go, I think he's going to be using that bumper a little bit more. So you probably got to go. Yeah, point he don't there. drive that too for nothing, boys. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they got some lap traffic there with uh, Ricky Goodman They're just in front of him. Uh, going to have to deal with that. See how that goes. Yeah, it looks like Ricky's no tires is really coming back to haunt him now. Yeah, Ricky really needs a caution here, or the, otherwise he's going to have to do some type of short pit um, and just get in a different sequence, uh, pitting sequence than these guys. But um, it doesn't look like it's going to work out too well for him. James Skelton uses he uh, uses just that moment of hesitation by John, um, gets underneath him, makes a really clean pass here. Uh, maybe John didn't want to be the one to, that was going to initiate that pass around, out, around Rick, and he wanted to follow someone. So looks like that's going to happen right yeah. here. Over over team radio, it sounded like uh, Fershing got really tight off of four there and uh, checked up, and uh, of course James had a good run on him. So I'm sure Fershing be right back here on him here in just a second. 
Wait, do you think the tightness was because he got that arrow, that dirty air from uh, from Rick? Absolutely. Yep, probably a good possibility. Yeah, you can run behind one of these cars like they are now and get used to that. But if you've been running out front, clean air, and yeah. all of a sudden the, the nose just doesn't want to stick, yeah, it's it's a whole different ball game then. No, you make a good point. You get into this, this rhythm, and you're just turning your laps and being quick, and then all of a sudden something changes, and it can throw you off. So Allison and uh, Lafleur has made their way to the top three here. <laughs> it's going to be a top five here in about a couple seconds, if it isn't already. Oh, yeah, Nate's got to get there and battle Buckley for this. Uh, you know, get back, get one of their laps back in position. Uh, get a caution here once, uh, I don't know, once pit stop cycle through here. Yeah, and like you said, Dustin, first thing's been tight here, and so I'm not, I'm not sure how much you want to stay out in front of these guys because uh, you can see him checking up here as a result. Yeah, you can see that there's three cars lined up behind uh, John, and that means he's the slow one. So these guys are going to be thinking about how to get around them as they kind of scatter here. It looks like somebody got loose and they kind of backed off just to get things back in line. Yeah, as, as you guys were talking, uh, Ershing uh, said over the radio that uh, he, his uh, far and dirty, uh, that dirty air um, really was affecting uh, how his car was driving. So. Um, Definitely getting that car out in front of him and uh, getting a little gap there will help him settle back in, I think. Yeah, that, that clean air has been great for James. He's kind of just put a half a second gap on the on the cars behind him. He's he's liking what he's seeing in his rear view mirror. But these guys with 49 laps to go, they're going to be thinking about coming in uh, for a pit stop here pretty soon. So do you think Buckley used up a little bit of those tires now? I mean, he, he is close to the two cars in front of him, but now he's dealing with Nate LaFleur, who is definitely, I think, a little bit quicker there as we see him get a heck of a run coming out of two on Buckley and see if he does something with him here in three. But Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Jamie. Um, Buckley's still you know, turning 28 eights um, at before, so we'll see what he turns here. But um, Nate was definitely pretty quick. Um, yeah, that as we see him underneath quicker, him. So. Oh, 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 it was so close. We've seen that before, Dustin. We've seen Lafleur be fast, choose the low line, and push up in the corners. Uh, he, he doesn't seem to have the car to run that low line uh, without the right angle. Well, you know, I saw him kind of put those wheels on that, on that white line, and the only car that I've been able to see do that successfully tonight uh, is Calvin, so... Uh, he he kind of put his tires on that line and just shot up the track, and that's where he got you know he had to get off the gas to prevent uh, from coming in. We've got a car smoking blowing up in the back there. It looks like Andrew Packer. It looks like it's uh, time for our cycle through or um, pit stops. So it looks like 915 and 986 are coming in. Calvin Allison's going to retain the lead here. Oh no! I think John Fershing Jr. blew that pit stop. Oh yeah, he's way off the pace. Looks like you're right. He looks like he missed the pin entry. He's gonna have to drive it around. Not good. I think it, you know, I think it was just a skeleton in front of him there. He just couldn't get in there. You know, but uh, it it may hurt him just a little bit. But you never know. Fershing uh, with the the other guys have had, maybe it's not gonna hurt him as bad as it would if those guys were on the lead lap. So um, I guess good to happen to him now instead of late. Yeah, you know, it, you're definitely right. I think the, going around is probably better than crashing on the, the entry and getting a pit uh, unsafe pit entry. So he probably did the right thing by aborting that pit stop and going around. Uh, but you're right, he's gonna, it's going to hurt him a little bit here. Yeah, it's definitely going to let Calvin stretch it out. But uh, if you look, uh, third place car of uh, Brent Rogers as they cycle through came in at the same time. Um, so uh, maybe not hurt as bad as we originally thought. We'll have to see how that cycles through. And I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think Allison can actually go a little bit further, I thought. Or did he come in? He did come in. He came in. Okay. He came in a lap. Yep. Yeah, because I thought on that last caution, I thought he came back in for fuel. I do. He usually does. <laughs> That's why I was kind of surprised to see him in the pit, but, you know, maybe it wasn't a, you know, that extra lap wasn't really uh, all that. We've seen that happen time you before as well yeah, as i think we speaking, did uh go ahead dustin 
I was just gonna mention, uh, we hadn't talked about the butcher much tonight, but uh, he retains the lead. He's, you know, he's one of those fuel mileage guys, and right now, you know, he's he's uh, ten seconds ahead over James, but he'll be pitting here soon. But definitely, Butch is one that saves his fuel, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Last night when we were, or Monday night, I guess it was, we were goofing around with trying to figure out what fuel mileage was, and I think I did like 26 and a half laps, and Butch was doing like 28. So yeah, he can he can definitely save some fuel. And it looks like he's off the track. He's he's setting up for a pit entry here. Really conservative pit entry there from Butch. He's kind of running the uh, the uh, the shoulder all the way through three and four. Yeah, that's real conservative. <laughs> hey, it's better Tell than I uh, reckon. I think Farson really lucked out there. He. Uh... He's still going to retain uh, third place here, and he's only about 18 seconds back. Um, so not as bad as it could have been for him. So good break. Yeah, I only have him nine seconds back from James Skelton. So uh, he, you're right. He, it did yeah, he cost him. Now. You're correct. But it didn't cost him a ton. So he's going to get back on track. He's going to concentrate on turning some quick laps. laps but right now, uh, Calvin Olsen out front is the fastest car we on the track. get a spinner. Oh, and we have a caution. And I believe that was James, our leader. <laughs> it was. He's in the infield. Ooh. Man, Just that gets sounds loose like me out of Bristol. four. Got loose out of four. I'm telling and that's you that. going to give a big break to John Pershing there. Yeah. Four is just brutal on cars, you know. You, you. I, I think we've all of it all experienced it haven't we you're you're coming out of four it feels good the wheel feels good you got you think you got great traction and then all of a sudden it just literally comes around so fast that you're overcorrecting by the time you're trying to straighten it out and guys i'm not sure we're gonna have to go back and look at the replay but uh for the radio jordan beck said he was sorry so i don't know if he got loose and collected james or james was trying to avoid we'll have to take a look at that no replay. james was all by himself jordan beck was ahead of him um but there was plenty of room looks like uh you know we'll take a look at it again um but let's let's go ahead and ride on board with james uh through that three and four and see what he sees here I think you're right. Um. Yeah, Jordan Beck is ahead of him. Uh, you can see him through his mirror, and but he wobbled on his own, and um, that, I don't think uh, Jordan has anything to be sorry about there. Me neither. I just I saw him uh, say that he was sorry over chat there, so I was just kind of curious on uh, if he thought he did something wrong, but it didn't look like he did to me. So. Good thing, uh, yeah, you know. Just snap. A little bit different than the real world is you don't have to clean the grass off the grill. Or lose a front splitter. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll uh, he'll get back on track. Um, you know, with this caution, it's going to close everybody up. I don't think he'll be, um, at least I'm hoping, you know, as my pick, I, I don't think he'll be too bad. Yeah, I tell you, I, I look here and um, it looks like the 981 and the 2... Um, are going to, should stay out and get the wave around. And uh, they'll be back on a lead lap here, too. So. Yeah, you see that look at here. the two cars, dum, like he's, he's going to come down pit road, and we knew that wasn't happening. He's, he wants to get that wave around with, uh, with the leader right now being the eight car. Uh, three cars are going to get the wave around. Nate LaFleur, uh, Joshua Buckley, and Mike Abbott, they're all going to get the wave around. Well, hopefully that didn't uh, hurt LaFleur. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but Nate uh under the initial caution and uh was spinning in three and four by himself and uh, not spinning i'm sorry he, he got loose and you know there was smoke coming out of the car but he was able to recover it so hopefully that didn't count against him and uh he can get that lap back so well he's definitely gonna get the wave around here regardless um i don't know who the lucky dog is gonna be uh depending well, if kevin o'brien maybe Well, I, I'm thinking it's going to be Lafleur if that didn't count against him. I think. Well, he's going to get a wave round. Can you get a wave round and a lucky dog on the same same lap? No, he's only one lap down, as we as we see right now. Right, but he'll be a lap down even when he catches the tail of the longest line here, because he he's ahead of the leader, so he's one lap down. But um, to I think Raymond kind of confirmed there. I don't think you can get a wave round and the and the lucky dog. 
So I don't think you can get, you can make up two laps. Oh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, you're definitely right about that, but it's showing um, him getting a wave around, so yep. he should be just on the lead lap now. No, he'll still be one lap down. Because he was, he was on the lead lap, but he was... You get what I'm saying? He doesn't yeah, have to be the only one left on the lead lap. Yeah, I'm showing him uh, only him and Buckley only one lap down um, before the wave around, so we'll have to see how that works out. You're right. I see what you're saying. Though. Yeah. We'll see as they now all they cross have to the surface. Caution. Yeah, right. That's what they need. And you know what? With uh, 37 laps to go, I don't think they'll have to pray that hard. No. But they have a lot of traffic to go through. Um, so it'll be interesting. Now, if the viewers don't know, you can get the wave around, and most people would think, well, why not just pit? You can't. Pit road's closed. Yeah, you can't. You will take a big penalty. I think you take a lap penalty, maybe two. Pace car's in. It's definitely 15 seconds. And green flag. Brent Rogers is going to lead the pack into turn one. We got uh, Jonas Buck or Jonas Hankins on the outside. Behind them, we got Timothy Lewis and Calvin Allison. Calvin's looking on the inside. Hey, Lafleur back there had a heck of a run. Got held up by a bunch of lapped cars. Really threw off his uh, his run. So somewhere in this mix, they're going to have to save about 11 laps of fuel, which I don't see happening. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone saved 11 here. Ooh, Tim Lewis gets loose there. After it cycles around, it looks like uh, Nate LaFleur and Joshua Buckley are now both one lap down, so they're going to be fighting for that uh, lucky dog position. So uh, these guys are next to each other on the track as well, I believe. So. And we have Jordan Beck wrecked on the backstretch, so... Looks like a single car incident. He's uh, back to being towed there. Might have got loose coming off a of two. Jordan Beck is a relatively uh, new driver to the league. I know he's raced a couple races with us. Um, still think looks like he's still learning, learning the tracks, learning the cars. So um, we'll have to see. Uh, get him on the track. Uh, help him keep these cars together, and he can be uh, learning as we go here, so to speak. Not only new to Nav's car, but he's new to iRacing. I don't think he's been racing more than three months, so he's really, really new. Yeah, he got loose coming out of two there and uh, just put it in the oh, wall. Oh, no! And there may not be no caution here. James Skelton just uh, just gets a little, little loose. He uh, almost saved it and just went back and forth. Keeps it off of everybody, but no caution. That's going to uh, that's gonna hurt him for sure as he gets back up to speed. Yeah, he definitely had a good run on Pershing there, and he went to go turn to go make the pass, and the car just didn't like it. Any radio chatter after that incident? I don't know. I didn't check. I'll be there. No, it seemed uh, pretty quiet. Just, what I heard over the radio was just a couple things of uh, yeah, him getting a little loose and first and wondering why the caution didn't come out, but a car was off the racing surface. So. Yeah, next uh, next season we'll, we are going to talk about uh, you know what situations we'll throw a caution. I know you, NASCAR would definitely throw a caution in that situation, so next season with a uh, uh, dedicated admin, uh, we might be able to actually throw a caution in that situation. We'll talk about it in the off-season and see what we want to do, but um, yeah, iRacing doesn't get it right all the time, unfortunately. I definitely agree with that, Mike. I, I really think that needs to be looked in, and these guys, uh, you know, we don't want caution fest, but we definitely want um, these guys to have a legitimate chance, you know, um, like you said. Normally, when that car spins, he's definitely going to cause uh, some kind of, you know, mix-up, and, and NASCAR is going to throw that caution. So, um, definitely got to work on that. We'll talk about it over the off-season. Just really looking forward to next season. I don't know about you guys. 
yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm uh, I'm a little hesitant as well. I know we're going into the Gen 6 cars, so that's a new thing for us. It could be a lot different for these guys. A um, little bit more of a challenge with those cars. A lot more horsepower. you got to get harder on the brakes, and you're on the gas a little bit easier coming off the corners. So uh, it's going to be a learning curve for a lot of drivers. We'll see how it goes. Wow, like, I don't know if you Calvin Allison just, uh, we got to take a look at that. I don't know if we can get an instant replay here. Did you guys see what happened there? Yeah, he got loose, and uh, it was amazing he was able to keep that car straight. Does make a little contact. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but he may have got loose, but he just turned one of his fastest laps right before that, so, <laughs> um, Gonna see if we can take a look here. I'm not sure if we're gonna catch it on this replay. I just watched it, and he definitely got loose off a of two and went all the way to the wall at the bottom. Oh yeah, look at that! And saved it. It was pretty awesome. He's giggling his head off at the moment too. And still fast. That's the crazy part about it. Yeah, next lap runs at 28.742. So the man's man's got some speed tonight. Yeah, but I think Rogers wants to capitalize on that. You know, like, it's blood in the water, to be quite honest with you. I mean, Rogers knows it, and uh, so does uh, John Fershing Jr. So uh, they'd be more than happy to, to see something happen in front as long as they're not involved with it. I'll tell you, though, if there was another foot of safer barrier, man, he would have been in it. <laughs> yeah, and he knows He really did a good job of there. That's how you use the whole racetrack. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he uh, had a couple of fans down there in the infield or not. He just wanted to go by and slap hands. I'm not sure, but uh, definitely getting in the close there. Yeah, stuck his head out the window, just high five as he went by. <laughs> Probably rip a hand off. <laughs> He's got to be careful that beard hanging out the window like that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Doesn't he tuck that down into his fire suit? Yeah, you're probably right. In case anyone doesn't know, I got his picture up on the uh, on the broadcast now. That's uh, that's an epic beard he's got going on there. If if not, he he definitely uh, it's a fire hazard. <laughs> exactly. For sure. John Fisher Jr. Know, yeah, yeah. inside of uh, Brent Rogers going to make a pass for second here. Brent Rogers could be thinking about how he can fight back going into three. We'll see what that goes on. Yeah, Fershin's looked good here all night, man. He's definitely caught a lot of breaks with uh, other guys not being able to, but um, definitely looking good here so far tonight. Yeah, he's definitely racing with a championship in mind. Uh, you know, he's got his son still trapped a lap down, so that's exactly what he needs to come home with this victory. I'll tell you somebody we haven't talked about in a few minutes is uh, Tim Lewis, and he's still hanging back there in fourth, just ready to pounce here late. So um, definitely... A, good solid run for him tonight yeah and he just took that position away from Jonas didn't he I believe you're right Jamie yeah because I think Jonas was just in front of him there and um, Jonas looks like he's kind of got his hands full and now he's got his hands full with Buckley and Lafleur behind him so as Buckley looks to the inside of him so Nate LaFleur and Joshua Buck, they're going to be running pretty hard here. They know that a caution, you know, could be laps away. And uh, they want to be, uh, both of them want to be the one lead, lead car if a caution comes out, get that lucky dog. So let's not jinx anyone, but <laughs> it, it, John Fershing Jr., if he finishes in the top three and, and Nate doesn't uh, get out from underneath that being a lap down, uh, I think John Fershing Jr. might have it in the bag. Don't jinx him, Jamie. <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah, no, no jinx intended, but I'm, I'm telling you, Jamie, you're right. Uh, he's definitely, it looks like he has a chance to lead the most laps here tonight. Um, him and bonus points are going to be close between him and Nate, but um, we're just going to have to see how this race finishes out. Um, he's got to finish, I think, four spots ahead of him. I'll tell you guys, up, so when we get to the end of this race, I'll have you guys do the uh, the interviews, and I'll uh, while you guys are doing that, I'll update the points, and we'll, uh, we'll get an update here for the finish of the broadcast. So did Mike Abbott just short pit? Did, did he come in for fuel? 
Yeah, it looks like he did. He's uh, getting back up to speed as he exits here. Uh, you know, 19 laps to go. Anybody should be coming in here soon. So he took fuel and tires, so he should be good to the end. That's my yeah. understanding. He'll definitely be good to the end from here. Yep. We got cars on pit road as well. Looks like Josh, uh, Josh and Jonas are both on pit road. It's an interesting strategy by Josh. If a caution comes out right now, Nate would be set up for that lucky dog. Josh was reaching for water bottles in his car a while ago. <laughs> he usually keeps those in there. He needs them for other reasons. That too. <laughs> I tell you, these three leaders, um, I don't know if y'all saw this. Uh, first and second ran identical laps last uh, lap. and uh, We got a car running through the action. infield here. Wow, that's a bumpy ride. Can't believe he kept that together. And who was that? Uh, that was the 994 car of Kevin O'Brien. A silly Aussie. I guess, he, I guess he thought he was out in the outback. I'm not sure. Uh, we raced on <laughs> asphalt over here in America. So. Pretty sure he had all four tires off the ground at one point, but did uh, to keep it together, got it back up on the track. So we got 11 to go, is that what you guys are seeing? I got 15 to go. It's 130 laps, right? 133. Oh, 133. I like to be crazy, man. I think it's a 250 lap rate, or 250 miles. No, you just I, trying I to no throw idea. them off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure what I was thinking. I tell you what, you talk about tire fall off tonight. Um, guys are still running down in the 28.8, so that's not too far off of where they were, you know, qualifying. So um, good job on uh, definitely on NASCAR to bring this uh, tire this weekend. It's been really good to them. So I just I just had a chance to go back and look at that replay uh, that you were talking about, Mike, there with uh, Kevin O'Brien. <laughs> I cannot believe he did not wreck that car. That yeah, was insane. 150 miles an hour through grass and jumping like you, uh, that's hard to do. It makes it look easy there, but you can't turn the wheel. You just got to kind of hold on to it, and uh, he did a good job there. Yeah, that was impressive. Well, like Dustin said, he lives in Australia, so driving in the outback like that. Yeah, you know, he's, he's used practice. to it. John Fershing Jr., he's... Tim Lewis coming down the road here. John's actually going to pull up and let Jonas buy, not fighting for position. Uh, going to kind of let him buy here. We're going to see the 986 be here, too. Um, I hadn't talked about him in the last few minutes. Um, definitely be able to make it to the end. We're going to see when Calvin's going to be able to get in and hit. I think Calvin here just wants to put as many of them a lap down as he can and hope for a caution. So the 914, Dustin, you, you said Lewis came in for a pit stop. He, he takes no tires. It just takes fuel. Yeah, Ricky Goodman as well. Might, just fuel. And maybe that's what we're talking about, the uh, tire that NASCAR brought this week. Uh, you know, it's kind of not falling off as bad as you think. And um, these guys may be saying, hey, man, no tires here. Maybe able to get a little advantage. John Fershing Jr. is in his pit box. He stops four seconds. Stop. No, no tires. Just fuel. He's back on the track. And our leader just go. jumped in to uh, pit road there. Let's see what he does here. I assume we'll see the same thing, just a splash and go. Yeah, I don't see him taking tires. Need about 0.3 gallons per lap, so. 3.9 second stop. That's the fastest stop so far. He's uh, He's up to speed. Oh, he's loose with those uh, hot tires. <laughs> yeah, it's real loose. Yeah, he's sliding around that apron trying to get back into it. Yeah, that's that's one of the you know the dangers. And oh, he, he goes like around. He... Oh no! And that's gonna bring in a caution. Yeah, there's the caution. Yeah, he paid for it. That's always the risk of just taking fuel and no tires. Those tires are so slick coming out of pit road. This is gonna be a pretty good shootout, guys. That's interesting. Butch Frazier is gets caught out on the lead position, but he's still got to come in. 
Unless he thinks he can stretch it now. I don't think he can, though. That's a lot of laps. It's a lot of laps, even under caution. Well, we're going to have five to go when we come back, probably. Maybe four well, to if, go. He, if he turns it off... Of course, I don't know how many of these guys actually have a box or a yeah. voice command uh, to, to shut it off. Right now he's running... What do you think, guys, here? He's going to come in. I think he's going to come in. Yeah, as he uh, turns down pit road, he's going to get his tire or his gas right here. Uh, with that, there's only going to be five cars on the lead lap. Everyone else got caught a lap down. We've got Butch, Butch Frazier, Ricky Goodman, John Fershing Jr., Timothy Lewis, and Calvin Allison. Uh, maybe not. We'll see what happens. My my stuff's pretty wonky here, but I think we that's about right. Yeah, we got a few that's going to try to get the wave around just to Pending on their yeah, you're last right. time they pit. No, Abbott's probably gonna, he's definitely gonna get that easy wave around. So everybody in front of the uh, 915 is gonna get a wave around. It looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cars. So they're all gonna come back get their wave around, which is fine. Uh, means they won't get any tires though. These guys that are on pit road now can get some tires. So you said it was going to be interesting, and I just watched Allison take four fresh ones. So yeah, right. <laughs> oh goodness, it, it's going to be on. Yeah, he may have been the one to benefit the most out of this. Uh, just depend on what Fershing decides to do here. Well, Fershing looks like he's made his bed. He stayed out, so I don't, I don't see him coming in now. I'm saying he, he's made his bed. You don't give up track for you. Position at yeah, point. you can't come in when you're in first place at, at, with with eight to go. It's gonna be good. Now, what's your strategy coming to a restart here? Don't well, let off the throttle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard call because you got what Allison behind you now with four fresh tires. Who else is behind you with fresh tires? On the same lap. Well, it looks like Butch might be the first one. No, did Butch come in? I don't. I don't know if he came in. Yeah, Butch came in. So Butch is the first one in third place with four fresh tires. He did have a 14.5 second stop. Timothy Lewis, uh, fourth place, 15 second stop. Fifth place, Calvin Allison. So fifth place, you know, basically row three. We have Calvin Allison with four fresh tires. Man, if I'm Calvin, I'm driving around these guys as quick as I can because you know, next caution, that's the race. Absolutely. I know we hadn't talked much about Butch tonight, but uh, he was was fast in practice. He knows how to get around here. I know he's been playing it cautious, but um, him sitting uh, looks like he, depending on what uh, Ricky does here, um, he uh, stays out and he restarts second or third here. He's definitely going to be in the catbird seat uh, with those fresh tires. So what happens with Ricky Goodman? Ricky prays. <laughs> we saw that last restart when he started on the outside and he stayed out. Uh, it's going to be the same situation here, except he's not going to have that choice lane position. Um, I wonder what John's going to take. John probably is going to take the inside, so that might put... Yeah, it looks like he will, so that's going to put um, the four on the outside. Actually, it looks like... I can't decide... It doesn't look like he's decided yet. Maybe he's thinking it over. <laughs> I don't know, if I see him, I'd take the bottom, because that's the preferred line. Right, for sure. Especially with those guys in new tires. Make them use them up going around you. So now you're, you're Calvin Allison on the inside. You can't really go around the outside of these guys, because, you know, quite possibly Ricky Goodman's going to be there. So it, it this is going to be an interesting restart, to say the least. I think I think if you're firsting, uh, you're worried a l not too much, because uh, you're in good position, but... Um, he's on old tires, and uh, he was telling guys over the radio that he's uh, definitely thinking that he's um, going to try to give him room if he can. But um, you know, he's, he's looking at have to win this race, um, but he's definitely got to uh, pedal this thing just a little bit to hang on. Because uh, Skeleton, uh, you never know what's going to happen in these closing laps. He's not too far without uh, striking distance, so we'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, it's key to note to the, that uh, Nate LaFleur is still lapped down, so as long as... Uh... As long Get as John can keep it up front. Here. here we go, green flag. Oh, Calvin squeezes up. Yeah, real tight, real tight there. Butch is sliding up. Calvin's got to get by the four. 
Three wide, going down the back stretch, bumping, bumping. Oh man, loose, and there it and... goes. That's gonna oh. do it. The caution is out. Five to go. That could be the end. Ooh, hard crash to Allison. Just what the doctor ordered for the 915 for sure. Yeah. Tim Lewis was coming for him, but um, like I said, he was points racing as well. But uh, I think he said his tires were used up pretty good. So. Looking, uh, looking at the replay here, Calvin Allison bounces off of Bush Fraser, gets up, bounces off of Ricky Goodman. This is a tough position to be in. It's three wide. You're in the center. Uh, you got a slower car out on the outside. You got a car on the inside. Just touches the quarter panel, upsets Calvin a little bit, gets him loose. Uh, and he does a pretty good job here as we enter the corner to keep it to keep it straight, but uh, it's not enough as the two get around. Calvin uh, puts it sideways, looks like the four just squeezes by, but does get collected into the wall. And we've got uh, Mike and Nate both collected into the 28 there. Literally everybody back, nowhere else to go. we got uh, Cowboy running into Nate. Uh, the two car ducks low, looks like he gets out of that scot-free. Um, Skelton is just on the brakes and is able to slow the car up. Um, but looks like <laughs> Kelvin goes back up the track into the wall, um, but Skelton still is, is able to get through it. Uh, pretty pretty crazy race and kind of expected. I, I wouldn't put any blame into anybody there. Uh, just a tough, tough situation all around for these guys. Yep, new tires, old tires, and I'd, going for a win. That's all you can call that one. Yeah, you know, and, and that's kind of uh, that's kind of a, a product of the situation, right? We know Calvin's got to get on it because he wants that win, and he knows that caution could come out, could end the race, and um, you know that that ends up being what brings out the caution. So, uh, hard racing all around. Three to go. We might actually get a lap here. Uh, yeah, I, wouldn't I hold was your wondering. Breath. You know Calvin if there is. Up. I was gonna say if one of those, uh, if we do have a lap, I, I think uh, Tim Lewis has got him. Tim was fast there. Yeah, Tim, they shot Tim out of a rocket on that one. Lights are still yeah, on Tim the car though, so it's uh, it's over here. Four fresh ones, so um, looks like it's over. But I tell you what, uh, Pershing was definitely talking over the radio to Tim, uh, telling him that he definitely. Uh, him would have had his number there, so um, but uh, some days, some days it's good. I tell you what, Tim's put on a good show here tonight, and it's see him up front all night. I think it was a pretty entertaining race all around for our last race of the mid 2015 series. Uh, good job by all these guys all season long. I want to say that again. These guys are all pretty top notch guys, and seeing them come out every week to put up with each other, it's uh. You know, some of these guys make it look easy. A lot of people watching this might think it's it's easy to jump in and play this as a game, but um, you know, new drivers to iRacing will tell you that it's not easy. This stuff is uh, real challenging, and to be competitive, it's even more challenging. So, uh, great season overall. Uh, we'll get these drivers in here for our post race interview. I'll get the um, I'll get the the stats updated so we can get a final tally for the season, and we'll finish out our season. What do you guys think? Any comments on our season so far? Well, it's definitely just been one exciting. Small... Oh, absolutely. And like you said, Mike, these guys are great. I've raced with all of them. And you get this many racers together, and that's what they all, they all are, racers. Um, there's going to be yelling and screaming at each other, and it's it's part of racing. I mean, you watch it on TV, it happens. So had some growing pains over the season. Uh, we're going to get through it, and... I'm ready for the next one because I've seen the schedule. It's going to be fun. Yeah, no, no kidding, right? And we're in the A car. Don't remind me. They better bring their <laughs> A game. Oh, that was a good one, Jamie. Just bring it a backup. <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say too much, but you guys obviously know this. But I picked old first to win tonight, so uh, <laughs> technically keeping count. Boom. Um, that's win Confetti. number one for me. Uh, nice job. next season, buddy, we'll be putting the money up and, uh, we'll be running that, uh, battle of the booth and, uh, we'll be keeping track. So we'll see how you do next season, my friend. 
Jamie, yeah, well, you're you know, not allowed that's to That's about the only way I'll get a win, so. <laughs> And with that, that win is going to go officially to John Fershing Jr. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, I believe that's going to give him the season as well. Yeah, I believe you're right. You know, Nate Lafleur coming in in 10th place uh, tonight. Uh, I think that's just that's going to be enough to put him over the top there, especially with those bonus points. All right, I'll pull down uh, John Fershing. Uh, you guys can do your, your, your interview while I update update the uh, point standings. Okay. John, crazy uh, crazy race, man. You were able to uh, stay out there for the, f for the win. Unofficially, uh, you're looking good for the championship. We'll see how it goes here. Awesome. That was crazy. Uh, I can't believe how it worked out. It was a crazy race. Now, the 914 of Tim Lewis was right behind you, and you had to know it going into three there. And uh, Tim, with the four fresh ones on there, what were your thoughts? Uh, you had to hold them off if it was going to go green to the end. Oh, I knew I was a sitting duck. If we had to run a few laps, I mean, I did get away and get a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a jump there and a gap, uh, luckily. But, I mean, with how many laps were left, there was no way I was going to hold those guys off. Butch was wicked fast here uh, all last night and tonight. Tim was wicked fast all the time on fresh tires, and, and I just I knew I was a sitting duck. But good all around. I mean, you you had a great race. Uh, you you pretty much kept the car clean, though, didn't you, John? Yeah, yeah, I kept it clean. Um, I didn't get any incidents. I did touch the back of Jonas's car once, and sorry about that. He I don't know if he was getting loose in front of me or what happened, but. He backed up to me awfully quick, and uh, I did touch him, but it was a zero X, so uh, no no damage that I really had to fix tonight. But I missed pit road once, and I you know I wasn't it wasn't a night without mistakes. I just got lucky. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was going to ask you about that because there was a couple of incidents we heard on the on the radio that you were saying the car was tight and uh, wasn't handling like you wanted it to, but you you made it work. Man, I felt like a superhero out in front. Um, even you know when I can maintain a lead over driver, you know these guys and Kelvin and you know and and run there and not really have them breathing on my back bumper. I, I was feeling good, and then as soon as James got in front of me, holy aerotight, it was something else. Good tire wear though, didn't you? I mean, with the cooler temperatures, you you had the tires to to pretty much do what you wanted until, like you said, you got into traffic. It, that's that's what it looked like from the booth here. Yeah, exactly. Out in front, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted. Um, I just had to back my corner up a little bit and just drive a little bit differently once I got behind cars, and it took me a while to get used to it. Dustin, Raymond, you got anything for uh, our race winner tonight? Yeah. I'd just be uh, one to first congratulate you for being the midseason 2015 champ because I'm looking at the points. That's crazy. That's awesome. Thanks. Uh, congratulations. I thought I... I, I I thought that might be the case with Nate being in tenth or whatever in a lap down. I was uh, four points behind him. He got the pole, so that's five. And then, uh, yeah, once he got a lap down, I was just kind of keeping an eye on him. It's, of course, it sucks to have it end like that, but you know, ideally, you know, you want that that picture moment, like beating him to the line, and it was just enough points or whatever. But you know, it, I'll take it this way. It's awesome. He runs good, and so do all these guys. And to be able to pull this off is just uh, awesome. Yeah, John, as I, I told you, this is Dustin in the booth. Uh, just, you know, I was talking to you just there over the race radio that uh, you were my pick tonight, man. I, I'm glad you did me did me good. Uh, I knew you'd be fast and uh, definitely um, been good all season long and uh, glad to have you here at NASCAR. But uh, what are your thoughts going into uh, next year? You got uh, any plans, um, maybe a car change or uh, any, any kind of any insight into next season? Well, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the Gen 6 cars. I really like those cars, um, except for maybe on the, the super small tracks like Martinsville and Bristol. But besides that, I really like the A car. Um, still still going to be in a Ford, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I like those cars. 
But come on, John, reigning champions got to sound good, doesn't it? <laughs> that's 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 pretty awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out, man. We'll uh, we'll see. You. Well, we got a bit of a break here, but we'll see you for race number one of our uh, late 2015 series. Yep. Thank you, guys, all of you, and all the work you put into the league. I really really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll be here for for all the preseason thunders and uh, looking forward to the start of the next season. And he's a money winner too, isn't he, Mike? Yeah, thirty-five dollars in iris and credits coming his way. Um, Boom! Confetti. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was twenty-five. I didn't even know it was thirty-five. But either way, I was. I already okay, told you. Okay, it's twenty-five now. <laughs> <laughs> I was donating, donating it back to the league anyway. So. Well, awesome. That's good on you, man. We'll we'll talk uh, after and see what you want to do. Maybe we'll get you on board for a sponsorship, and we can pass that uh, that money back to the racers again. So, um, once again, congratulations, man, and uh, we'll talk soon. Cool, sweet. Thanks, guys. All right, let's bring up uh, second place, Timothy Lewis. Uh, you know, like seeing him up front tonight. Uh, Tim, buddy, great, great showing, man. We've seen you battling all season long. I think uh, we've said over and over again that consistently I think you're the most improved driver from the start of the finish to the end. And, uh, man, love watching your race. Uh, good job tonight. Yeah, thanks, guys. Man, I hated to see that caution. I had four tires, and John had no tires or i mean his tires yep. is probably pretty fresh but uh got a great restart there and the uh 55 kind of he didn't get a 555 he didn't get a real good restart so i seized party for me to drop to the bottom i don't i don't think he could have held me off without that caution but it had a great time thank you guys for putting this on oh tim you were my you were my pick tonight just so you know and i <laughs> i was really hoping to see you be able to capitalize with those four fresh tires on the back stretch. I went back and looked at the at the uh, replay of that. You had a run on the back stretch. You were you had a little bit different line. You were running just lower than uh, John Fershing Jr. on the back stretch, uh, and you you closed up a little bit in the corner. But it you know with the caution coming out, it just didn't work out in your favor. Yeah, uh, turns three and four was my corner, so I was I was looking to get him there. I could I <clears throat> I just I. You know, don't we will never know, but I, I think I could have got him. I was sure gonna give it. I, I might even put the bumper to him. I, I've never yeah. had a <laughs> non-restrictor plate win, so I was wanting it pretty bad. Oh, he was even saying that you were uh, you were definitely the winning car if that had a gone back green or if it had a straight green the whole way. I think, um, you know, late in the race, I think guys knew that that was the the time we had to get as many positions as we could because another caution ends the race and ultimately i know calvin was fighting pretty hard for position and we had some three wide racing and it was uh, pretty entertaining everybody almost held it together um but it wasn't to be in uh still second place finish man you can't be uh, you can't be too upset with that no and it's it's great that someone picked me to win <laughs> that's a that's a big change thank you jamie it's, uh like Mike said, when when you came into the booth there, I, I've been watching you all season long. I've talked about you several times uh, during the season. You know, I've raced with you uh, over at Red Light, and I've just said consistently, this guy is finding speed. I mean, uh, I know when the first couple of races we raced together, it was uh, you know, I've I've just seen constant uh, improvement uh, out of out of the four car, and uh, you were you were just fast, so. Uh, you know, one other quick thing. I I noticed you were in an incident earlier in the middle middle part of the race. There, you got into Buckley when when there was an accident in front of you. I mean, it, it happened so quick. I don't think there was anything you could do. But were you a little bit worried after that, or you just kind of regroup and and uh, get back at it? No, not, I was just worried about my. <clears throat> I thought my engine was going to blow up, but it, I just got back on the lead lap when that happened. I was kind of out of pit sequence, and. Yeah, I wor worried a little bit, and then when I came in, I, m I made it to pit road and got a got my reset, and then I I think I came out in seventh. I thought, well, this ain't it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out good. Dustin Raymond, you got anything for Tim? All I could see was him flying out, coming up behind John. If that caution would have come out, Tim, I'm telling you right now, you'd have had him. Yeah, I think so too, because I, I I really didn't get off of that corner good because I had to check up a little bit behind Ricky, and then the 555 left me a hole. So I, you know, I I definitely was out of the throttle quite a bit, you know, in and out of it right there trying to get through turns one and two, and and I was still kind of pulling on him a little bit, but I was banking on you know had I think three more laps. I I sure think I could have got him. I think I could have got him in one more lap, if and and I was 
thinking about the caution coming out. So I was, you know, I said, I can't wait. So I, I was planning on trying to have him, you know, coming out of four, but just wasn't meant to be, but it was fun. And it was, uh, probably the best race I've ran in a long time. So thank you. Guys. Well, man, it was an entertaining one uh, from up in the booth. Uh, Colin, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of action everywhere. So thanks for being a part of it, man. Thank you guys. Take care. All right, let's bring in third place finisher, Mike Abbott. Mike Abbott, man, third place. Uh, tough race all around uh, for a couple of you guys getting collected, but uh, you en ended up finishing it uh, with a top three. So, uh, what do you what do you think about that race? Yeah, I thought it was fairly good. I just I couldn't get the car to do what I wanted to in in traffic. I could catch up to someone about four tenths behind them, and then it just it didn't want to do anything so i mean i'm happy where i finished <laughs> well you got kind of you know i don't want to say lucky but you know on that last lap there you got caught up in uh in the in that at last accident you took some uh front end damage of it but you're still able to squeak out that third and you had to be a little bit nervous uh seeing that damage and trying to figure out how that was going to end up yeah, I was definitely watching my gauges on the caution laps, that's for sure. Uh, I definitely didn't want to see them go red, and luckily they didn't. Uh, I pretty much coasted around the those last couple laps there just to make it to the checkered, and, and that was that. So going into uh, next season, we're in the Gen 6 cars. We've got some, uh, yeah, I would call it a pretty challenging schedule for next season. Got any uh, Got any notes going into it? Well, I like to think that I'm a lot better in the A car than these cars. Um, they're, uh, for me, they, they're a lot more easier to, uh, I guess, handle. I mean, you can put the car where you want it, and it's a little easier to drive than these ones are. Um, I don't know about note-wise <laughs> what I got. <laughs> I mean, there are a few tracks that I'm, uh, I'm definitely. Uh, pretty good at in the a car but i don't i'm not even sure if they're on the schedule so i guess we'll have to see <laughs> so mike i'm curious about that i want to ask that question a little bit differently because you and i have talked setups before and uh you've talked about you you run a um uh, a setup if you will in that steering wheel and i, I am curious if you're going to modify that at all um going with that a car or are you going to go with uh you know we call you mr consistency are you going to go with uh, the old faithful uh, well, we'll have to, you know, once we get on the track with them and and uh, get some practice laps down, I'll have to see how it goes with my uh, normal setup. And, you know, I'll probably tweak it a little bit because, you know, as we all know, the A car is a little lighter and a little more horsepower. Um, and I don't even know we may have the new draft package by the time the next season starts. So... Um, you know, I, I think a lot of that all plays into how I approach the steering setup. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, some off time, uh, but, uh, getting into that set, that third season, uh, for the year, it's going to be a lot of fun. So look forward to seeing you on the track, uh, come September and, uh, congratulations again on a third place finish. Yeah. Thanks guys. Appreciate what you do. Awesome. Well, that's uh, that's gonna wrap it up for our uh, for our second season, man. Uh, it was uh, definitely an interesting one. I think uh, you know for our second season ever of NAPSCAR, I think uh, it went pretty well. But I'm looking forward to uh, getting it done and and moving on to the third one. Uh, we got a bit of a time off. We uh, won't be back on on air until September um, September 30th. So we've got uh, about six weeks. Uh, five weeks of uh, preseason thunder, which will be uh, an open series that uh, will run on the iRacing uh, hosted sessions. Uh, will be open to everybody. Those races will not be broadcast. We will use that time to kind of tune our setups, make sure we're good to go for our September 30th broadcast date, and we'll be back on it. So um, any notes from you guys before we uh, sign off for the last time? No, not really. I mean, I like you said, Mike, I'm pretty excited about the, the next season, too. I think it's going to bring out a lot of good racing. I think we're going to see some new drivers in here uh, and the, the field get even bigger. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I do want to know if John Fershing Jr. is going to, you know, be popping champagne here uh, mm -hmm. after the race or is right now. But uh, congratulations to him. And uh, he's going to 
you know, be that champion in that, in that series uh, going in, reigning champ. So uh, let's see if he can do it again. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, on behalf of everybody at NAVSCAR, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on the flip side. Uh, have yourself a great evening, and we'll see you in September.